Cairo, Seattle. This is COVID-19 Seattle. I'm Dave Ross. And I'm Erin Granillo. A new report from the state health department shows warmer weather could be the virus's kryptonite. Washington is sending back a federal field hospital before it ever took in any patients. The nation's leading expert on infectious disease gives Washington high praise. Never let it get to the point where containment wasn't working and you had to go to mitigation. More from Dr. Anthony Fauci on how the state is managing the outbreak. Stay right here. The State Department of Health has been doing ongoing research into the COVID-19 virus, and it turns out we've learned a few things. Kyrita's Hannah Scott's been looking into some of their conclusions. Uh, Tell us about the genetic sequencing and what that tells us, Hannah. So that is uh, from my favorite guy over at the Seattle Flu Study. That's uh, Trevor Bedford, and he basically gets all the samples and does the genetic testing on these people who have the virus, and he's been doing that since our first case here in Snohomish County back in January, I believe, the first U.S. case, and he connects, uh, he can kind of tell where they're coming from if it's, you know, uh, straight from the China outbreak or if it's come from Europe and things like that, and essentially what he's found, this is through through the middle of March, and it shows that they are generally, for the most part, coming from this one big event, a case of someone coming from Wuhan, China, back to here, and then spreading it throughout, uh, you know, exponentially. So from him to another couple of people and on and on and on throughout the Snohomish County area and much of the Puget Sound area. And it actually, it appeared here as as long as six weeks before the first case at the uh, assisted, assisted living center? Yes, absolutely. It's this cryptic spread, right? That's why it kind of goes back to, uh, again, that first case who was in the middle of January. Uh, and then several weeks later, they had our first press conference, kind of the first death had happened. I think that was at Life Care, but it was that teenager at uh, Jackson High School mm. who had tested positive. And Trevor Bedford had previously connected those two cases, even though those two had never been together, uh, near each other. And that's how they knew there was community spread. And yes, like this cryptic kind of transmission through the community for four to six weeks before we really knew what was going on. This is so fascinating because we know that first patient from Wuhan, he he checked into the hospital like one or two days after he got home, right? And I know that the, the health department was monitoring 50, 60 people who he thought he had come into contact with, right? Right. And that that teenager was not among them. So, uh, you know, we we still have never been able to really get even back when we were trying to contain the contact tracing wasn't fabulous here. But uh, so I don't I've never heard how exactly they determined uh, other than just doing the testing that those two cases were related like that. I I don't they never had come in contact. So he must have at some point had contact with a surface or something else. uh, Another person that 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 first case had uh, in the beginning. Now, there's also another study which found that the virus apparently is very temperature sensitive. So tell us about that one. So that's a really big deal. And that is going to be the big question moving forward. And and we've even heard the governor say this is perhaps there's a way that the the warmer weather is going to have some sort of impact on this. I know there's a lot of people hoping that that's the case. Uh, This seems to argue for the fact that perhaps there is, I believe, 72.5 degrees is the is the magic number where they seem to see uh perhaps less transmission um and maybe uh in warmer temperatures and more humid temperatures that it could kind of dampen the spread of the of the virus it's it's kind of a loose study not a hundred percent that you can count on it just yet but it's an indication that would make a lot of people very happy and then the um there was a study about uh, a, a different way to collect samples so if we do have to get to some sort of universal testing, you wouldn't necessarily have to stick that swab all the way up your nose. Right. And it's a couple of different ways. I think it's a tongue tongue test and then also uh, not that deep, like all the way back into your eyeball through your nose kind of way. And, it, and it's a self, you, you give it to yourself. So that's yeah. one of the big differences here. Uh, you could it's, We talked a lot about home tests before uh, over the last couple of weeks. So far, you're not allowed to do that. And, and I've seen a lot of data outside of this particular study that there's concerns about having people do that test themselves. It might be more comfortable, might be more efficient and a good way to ramp everything up quickly. But the problem is, is that there are researchers and and medical professionals who are concerned. uh, You know, it's not just that easy. It's not like taking, say, a 
a home pregnancy test or something, right? There are things that must be done. Uh, it would need to be stored at a specific temperature to get it where it needs to go. And that's the concern about doing any kind of home test, but it would certainly be more comfortable. Kyrie is Hannah Scott. Thanks, Hannah. You bet. I take this as pretty good news. Governor Jay Inslee says he is packing up and shipping back that uh, field hospital that was set up at CenturyLink Field. He says it's going to be deployed to another state facing a more significant need. Now, this was uh, set up about a week ago by hundreds of U.S. Army soldiers. It had the capacity to hold 250 beds, and it was intended to handle any overflow of non-COVID-19 patients. And it turned out there was no overflow, and they didn't need it. And the governor explained that he requested the field hospital before the social distancing strategies were fully implemented, and the state was still concerned that our normal hospitals would be overloaded with COVID-19 cases. The University of Washington projections showed that we would escape the kind of crunch that New York State had. And I have a feeling there will be some people who say, I told you so. (laughs) Yes, this is also just the latest announcement showing that we're trending in the right direction. I mean, on Sunday, the governor said he was returning 400 ventilators to the federal government's national stockpile to help out other states that are uh, more in need. So, I mean, yeah, this is all good news right now. And a lot of people might be saying, yeah, I told you so. We won't need all this this stuff. But this also has to do with the fact that we have been practicing good social distancing. And and this is this is all good news. But it's all good news because it seems like we did the right thing. Right. I think when it comes to preventing something, you actually want people to be able to say, I told you so. Mm -hmm. It was never going to be a big deal. And what you do if you're a, a politician who had to make that decision is just smile and say, well, I'm glad we escaped the worst. And that's the way it is. Nobody gets rewarded for successfully preventing something, right? Because you can look back and say, well, you probably didn't need to do that. But I think in this case, because of what happened in other countries like Spain, like Italy, we know what might have happened had we not been prepared. The other way I look at this is we finally had a real world earthquake drill. I mean, this mm-hmm. is the kind of thing that we will have to do if uh, the big one ever comes. I don't think anybody has, has actually, in, in these drills, gone to the trouble of seeing if you could set up a complete hospital in three days, and now we know it's possible. And how many times did we hear, by the way, in the, in the early stages of this, that if you think we are overreacting, good. Good. <laughs> you want to overreact in a situation like this. I, I tend to agree with that. I think I, I've tried to put my, myself in the place of the people who had to make these decisions. So what would I rather the outcome be? that I overreacted and now people are making fun of me for being uh, overcautious or I underreacted and 10,000 people are dead. I think I know which one I'd choose. The top doctor on the White House Coronavirus Task Force says we did a darn good job jumping on the issue quickly. Dr. Anthony Fauci says that kept the state's outbreak more manageable than in other areas. So what the Seattle area and what the state of Washington did very well is that they never let it get to the point where containment wasn't working and you had to go to mitigation. Mm-hmm. They were able to do that early containment really quite well. Dr. Fauci spoke with KTTH's Jason Rance, and he says although the state's early efforts have kept this infection rate rather low, now is still a critical time to keep it that way. When you look at the daily pattern of new cases, they are starting to plateau somewhat. And when they plateau, even though the deaths might lag in the sense you still have considerable deaths, the engine of infection that's feeding that is starting to plateau and stabilize. Dr. Fauci knows that once people see those improvements, there's going to be a call to return to normal life as soon as possible. But he says that to ease up on social distancing would be a very bad idea. You don't want to when you see the pattern of the virus turn the corner and start coming down, throw up your hands and declare victory and say, let's just immediately go back to normal. That would be inappropriate and dangerous. And he reminds us that it is the virus calling the shots right now. The virus determines the timetable of what you do, not your predetermined uh, timetable that you that you put forth. Now, as for getting back to normal, he says we should expect a slow return to the way things once were. And he says his recommendations to the president and others will be based strictly 
on the data. The good news about this is that I'm not an economist and I have no political interest of anything at all. My only concern is the public health of this country and ultimately the world. We will be back tomorrow and every day after with a 10-minute rundown of the daily local news. You can subscribe to this podcast. You can also find our news coverage on MyNorthwest.com or listen live at 97.3 FM.